introducing Dr. Jackie Damages. Woo! Welcome to the show. My name is Dr. Damages. We are coming to you from the greatest city in the world. New York City. Yes, yes, yes. New York City is so great that our mayor is planning to lay off 22,000 workers. Are you not surprised? 22,000 workers. Do you know what that means? Imagine if Lagos State or, or, or Abuja or Nairobi fires 22,000 government workers in one day, what will happen? You have 22,000 tenants who won't pay their landlords at the end of the month. Mama put restaurant will miss 22,000 customers. As for baby mamas, <laughs> 22,000 of them will be left alone. It's going to impact a lot of people. A lot of people. The reason for the sack is that tax revenues have dropped due to coronavirus. Also, also, it did not help that Hush Poppy and Governor Nasa Aero 5 of Kaduna State did not come for summer vacation in New York City this year. By the way, do you think that uh, Aero 5 <laughs> will be allowed to come into New York City after their threat to send um, election monitors, observers home in body bags? Do you think that will happen? Anyway. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio uh, has begged President Trump to send bailout money to New York City. But Trump ignored him, not after he abused Trump. You know, here is President Trump, his reaction the last time the mayor of New York City went to D.C. to see him and beg for bailout money. Take a look. <laughs> my friend, my friend, my friend, that, that wasn't New York City mayor now. That was Donald Trump's uh, government wife, Melania, yeah? frowning her face after greeting uh, Trump's uh, non-government wife, Ivanka. <laughs> Ivanka. I told you, I told you, these people are so real, especially when they think that you are not watching. But um, I hope you got the point. I hope you got the point. It is the same point I've been trying. I've been pounding and pounding and pounding every week, hoping that you will get it pounded. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who's that? That's some more your less show, right? <laughs> Why didn't he show that skill when he was running for president? You know what I mean? He will have won over women's votes. Anyway, so, so New York City mayor wishes that he could be like the governor of Kansas State, who is going to China to borrow 300 billion naira. 300 billion. Look at the headline now. 300 billion. Hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, you see, you see. Calm, calm down, calm down, calm down. He's going to China with an interpreter and, and a lawyer from the new uh, Northern Nigeria Bar Association. No, 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 no. The governor will not hand over the sovereignty of Kano to China. No, Sharia law will not allow that. Look at that headline again. <laughs> Look at it. Yeah. Who are those Kano elders kicking against Governor Ganduje borrowing money? Do they know who Ganduje is? What do they want the man to do? To bring out uh, dollar bills from his Shokoto. Is that, is that what they want him to do? Is that... You see, <laughs> the only thing that can stop Ganduje from borrowing money is if there is something in Sharia law that can stop him from doing that. Otherwise, nobody can stop him. He's gone. <laughs> I'll get back to Governor Ganduje and Sharia law. But first, I'm excited to inform you that Nigeria's vice president has resurrected from the dead. <laughs> I'm sure you saw Vice President Yemi Oshiba just show up in Asso Rock this week when uh, Daddy Gio, our Daddy Gio, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, paid a visit to President Muhammadu Buhari. Look at the picture now. Look at them. The Vice President even got an appointment from President uh, Muhammadu Buhari afterwards. Look at the headline. Look at the headline. Yeah. You see, this is what I've been telling you guys, young people. Respect your father and your days will be good. He brought his father in the Lord and Buhari immediately gave him an appointment. The vice president is now heading a committee that will be meeting with another committee on a way to make the third committee to do its job. <laughs> Which is a promotion from where he was last week. You know what I mean? Now, I want to talk about vice president uh, uh, Shibajo and uh, Kama. No, 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 not that Kama. I'm talking about Kama, the company and allied matters uh, act. It took 
Christian outrage over Kama for that the GO and the VP to get an audience with President Muhammadu Buhari. You know, we, we, we did not know what they discussed behind closed doors. That the GO did not even say a word to us, the media, when he left. Remember that uh, General Tiwa Denjuma did exactly the same thing after meeting with Buhari in Asarok. That is never a good sign. Don't you notice that each time Good Luck Jonathan, former president Good Luck Jonathan, goes into Asarok, he comes out smiling and talking to the press. Though remembering all the fights that he had with Mama Peace, you know, in that building. It's enough for a man to smile <laughs> when you walk out. <laughs> anyway, but, but, but you have to give it to Pastor Deboye. You have to give him credit. Why some prophets protest by splashing their saliva all over the pulpit, shaking their apostles who are, who are in the front row? Eh? Government has no power to appoint people over churches. No power at all. The real people who have power, the real prophets, go directly into the, the, the palace of the prince and, and, and talk to them and protest. Okay, okay, so, so let's start this story from the very beginning. A lot of people are concerned about what happened to Nigeria's vice president, Yemi Oshibajo. Are you, are you not concerned? He was once a star boy, but now sent to the manger. Now, this is important because some of those who voted for Buhari in 2015 did so with the hope that if Buhari's worst instinct were to emerge, you know, that there will be a moderating influence from the vice president, a professor of law, a senior advocate of Nigeria, and as a matter of fact, a senior pastor at the redeemed Christian church. People had their hope that that would be the last resort. Some good people thought that the vice president won't be there and watch Buhari hike the price of petrol, electric bill, dollar exchange rate, VAT, uh, cable TV bill, uh, stamp duty. Even the cost of getting reporters to cover Femi Fani Kayode's press conference these days. What, no, put, put that thing down. Let me address, what type of stupid question is that? What type of stupid question is that? Bankrolling who? Unfortunately, it had not worked out as planned. In recent months, it was clear that things have not been going well for the vice president. In fact, it has been worse. Just, just take a look at the recent assignments that they've been giving the vice president. The vice president has uh, been sent out of recent to market the worst of Buhari's government policies. Look at, look at this headline. Yeah, look at it. The joke out there is that the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs is the first person in the world to feed millions of people through Wi-Fi. <laughs> Nine million kids fed. Yet, everywhere in Nigeria, hungry kids are saying, where is the food? Where is the food? Even if the feeding was done only in Buhari's hometown of Daura and, and some other chosen places up north, the Vice President should have been able to come out honestly and frankly and say to the people that, well, the feeding was done here. And not leave people in Okene to be scratching their heads and wondering where is the food. The other day, the vice president was sent in front of the remaining Nigerian Bar Association, RNBA. <laughs> the remaining members of the Bar Association to, to talk to Christians who were angry at Kama and what to do about it. Here is the story as reported by Channel News. Watch. Professor Shebajo said that if a section is contentious, what the agreed parties can do is to approach the National Assembly and propose an amendment. Yep. <laughs> it's simple. So, so you know, when you are told to take any matter to the National Assembly in Nigeria, what the person is actually telling you is essentially to go to hell. <laughs> go to hell. Yes. The National Assembly is a hell hole. Can you remember any law that the National Assembly passed of recent that fixed something? Just anything. Can you remember? Take for example, Oji Zukalo, who was freed from prison. Yeah, due to mere technicality. The issue was that the judge who sentenced him to 12 years in prison had been promoted to a higher court and should not have done the sentencing. 
He was not freed because, because he was not guilty of the charges. Did EFCC do anything about it? Nope. Did the National Assembly do anything to fix that? No, exactly my point. <laughs> exactly my point. By the way, where were all the pastors when the National Assembly was debating this uh, Kama law? Probably they were too busy counting tithes and offering and uh, plotting how to make sure that their children inherit their churches. That's it. Where were all the Christians and Muslims in the National Assembly who voted for that bill? Again, busy sharing money. That's all they do at the National Assembly. Where was the vice president, a pastor, a loyal professor, and a senior advocate of Nigeria when the law was being debated? Where was he when it passed and got to the table of the president? Where was he before the president signed it? Folks, it's not everything that is Buhari's fault. It is not everything that is part of the grand plan to Islamize Nigeria. Sometimes we just have to accept our responsibilities. I'm telling you. So what happens next? Well, the battle for 2023 is set in Nigeria. The candidates are almost clear. We know them now. There are three major candidates, Ojizo Kalo, Bola Tinubu, and Abubakar Atiku. The three are different sides of the same triangle. The only difference between them is that one has gone to prison. Now, the other two should have, but they have not yet <laughs> gone to prison. That's it. That's it. Now, talking of people in prison, you must have heard about this 22-year-old uh, musician, Yaya Sharif Aminu, in prison in Kano, waiting for death by hanging for blasphemy. Now, now the young man was tried in a Sharia court, Sharia court, and was found guilty of saying something in his song that sounded as if he elevated an imam of his uh, brotherhood, Muslim brotherhood, above Prophet Muhammad. It is like a Yoruba musician singing the praise of Bola Tinubu in a way that is above Obafemi Awolo. Now, now, that is death sentence. You should be sentenced to death for that. <laughs> or, or, or like when supporters of Zik of Africa or, or the Megwe Meko Juku hear young people, young boys of nowadays singing, holy, 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 Nam de Kano is another savior. You feel like, damn, these kids should be sentenced to death by hanging. So, Kanu Sharia Court said that he should appeal. But they are not letting him meet with his lawyers. How is he going to appeal? And time is running out. Meanwhile, the great governor of Kanu State is ready to sign his death warrant. Look at the headline. Look at it. Can you imagine that? In Africa. Yeah. He, he, said, he said he can wait. He cannot wait for a minute to sign the death warrant. Look at, look at this business day newspaper cartoon or uh, that captured Governor Ganduja's uh, holiness. Look at it. Yeah. That is Sharia law for you. It has been used to punish poor people since 419 AD. I'm going to talk about this matter of blasphemy and killing for God and killing in the name of God, but I'm an ordinary infidel. You know, I don't know anything about Sharia law, which, if you think about it, is the only qualification that I have to talk about things that I talk about here, not knowing anything. <laughs> I only changed my mind because Shehu Shagari's uh, grandson warned those of us who are not Muslims not to put our dirty mouth into the matter, matter like this. Look at the headline now. Now, if you ask me who is Shehu Shagari, <laughs> I know you were born beyond after the 90s. Anyway, but as an African, and I believe that we were Africans before Islam and Christianity arrived in the continent. So as an African, we believe that as a people, Whatever law you want to govern your affairs must be applied equally to both the rich and the poor, the weak and the strong, the Ganduje and the Gandola alike. Otherwise, the law is unfair. And an unfair law 
It's an unfair mandate from the gods. Sasha! Tweet that out. Now, I'm sure there is something Sharia law said about collecting bribe, violating public trust, and indirectly contributing to a contractor doing a poor job that could lead to the death of people in Kanu. Oh yeah, there must be something that Sharia law said about such corruption. How could a man caught on tape committing such a crime be so eager to sign the death warrant of a 22-year-old man who just sang a song in praise of his favorite preacher? Sometimes I feel like leaving all this new world of imported holy books, foreign technologies like WhatsApp and microwave and 5G, and go back to the world that, that we Africans had before the Arabs and Europeans came. I swear, that was when we owned ourselves, when we managed our conscience, and when we had our own gods made in our own images. You know what I mean? When I think that one day, someone like Governor Ganduje will sign another man's death warrant, it makes my heart pound and pound and pound and pound. Damn, did you see what she already did there? He tested the pounded yam with his fingers. Now, now, do you know that if he does this twice a week, his stomach will go down? No, no, I don't, I don't mean if he eats pounded yam twice a week. I mean, if he pounds yam twice a week, his stomach will go down. Trust me, he should try it. <laughs> he should try it. <laughs> Here are some stories making headline news across Nigerian newspapers this week. Now, headline news is brought to you by Help Me Waka, the people who go and do the errands for you. Take a look. Hi, it's go. Problem solved. Diasporan family, do you live abroad and have an errand that you want someone to carry out for you in Nigeria? Whatever errand you want can now be taken care of without any hassles. Introducing Help Me Waka. The reliable and trusted people of Help Me Waka will gladly run any errand for you in Nigeria. Go to their website, helpmewaka.com. Help Me Waka. Oh, oh this, is, this, is, this, is, this is a wonderful one. I don't believe in one Nigeria, says Bola Tinubu. <laughs> now, this one is a blast from the past. It was first published in 1997. People are sharing it again all over social media to prove that deep down, Bola Tinubu does not believe in one Nigeria. I say, person no go fee play with you people. What is wrong with you people? The man was just playing then. That was before his mouth started uh, reach the, the breast of Lagos State government and started sucking. <laughs> don't, think that, don't think that I don't see what all of you are posting on social media in defense of Bola Tinubu. That, that, um, that we have to put the headline in the context of the time. That it was, it was during the, the fight for democracy. Yeah, that, that he said it just after Sani, Sani Bacha's boys attacked his house with fire bombs and, 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 and he ran to, to, to London. I'm like, really? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that that happened. What happened to Namdi Kano happened before in Nigeria. What? Really? Wink, wink. <laughs> but, but unlike Namdekano, Bola Tinubu is a hero for running away when attacked while um, Namdekano is um, whatever. But, but does that mean that, does that mean that Namdekano could come back to Nigeria one day and, and run for president? Is that, is that what it means? Nah. Really? Nah. <laughs> Anyway, oh, this other one, this is wonderful. Nigeria's three refineries processed, no, no, no way, zero crude oil in June, and yet cost us 10 billion naira. <laughs> 10 billion naira spent, and they made nothing. Yeah, now, now, can you imagine if, um, you can't make this sense up, can you imagine if they actually fired the refineries for one day, how much that would cost us? They did nothing and they cost us 10 billion. 
Remind me again, who is the minister in charge of uh, the NMPC? Who is the minister? <laughs> oh, forget it. Forget about it. His cows, eh? they eat every day. But year in, year out, they remain the same number, 250 cows. So what's the surprise there? NMPC, the same pattern. <laughs> the same pattern. Uh oh, this one, this one is wonderful. Probe, Nigeria will break if we release list of looters in NDDC says the interim management committee <laughs> i beg you help me laugh in fact in fact help me faint <laughs> what team prostitute never see before eh? i beg these people underestimate nigeria's shock absorber it is strong jj it's strong we tell us we can absorb it we know everything we know who 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 did it still all of you we know <laughs> nonsense next oh, oh, oh this is a tweet a tweet uh from from reno or mockery you guys know reno oh yeah he said he said today the same naira that general muhammad buhari inherited at 205 naira to a dollar is now 475 naira to a dollar reno or mockery wow oh reno reno shall we tell him let me let me surprise all of you the Naira that President Ojuzo Kalo will inherit uh, at uh, um, 795 to a dollar in 2023 when he takes over will be 1,050 Naira to a dollar in 2027 when Ojuzo Kalo will be running for a second time in office. I'm telling you, as long as Nigeria does not produce anything, not even toothpick or pencil, Naira will be going down, down the drain. You can't change it. It doesn't matter who is your president. Nonsense. Oh, oh, oh this is this is this wonderful. This one. This is from Dele Momodu. He made an argument against Kama. You know, he said that, that this is the argument. <laughs> Nigerian pastors are running their churches 100% better than the way the president is running the country. So why should there be control of what they are doing? Abio, you know, see, so, so, Osho, the market traders who are running their businesses better than Lagos state government. So what is the business of Lagos state government trying to control the market? What? Nonsense. I didn't even want to say, wait, wait, wait until the founders of these churches die before you say that they are running it better than, the, than Nigeria. If Nigeria were to be Benson in the church, Nigeria would have ended in 1966. <laughs> it did. I think it did. <laughs> ah, you can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Damages. And on Instagram at Dr. Damages. And on Facebook at Dr. Damages. You can also support us by going to Patreon to donate any amount that you can afford. One dollar, two dollar, a month, three dollars, five dollar, ten, twenty, anything, hundred. Just we, we appreciate anything you can do to help us. You know, help us to return this show to its full length. Oh, oh, we have good news along that line. Thanks to some of people who are pitching in to support us. From next week, we have a new nurse starting. Oh, yeah, we will be reading your emails. And at the same time, your tweets to us. So it's, it's, it's getting better. It's getting better. Now, here is my concern for today. My concern for today is brought to you by SendWave. SendWave is extending their back-to-school promo to September 7th. Hi, I have some great news from SendWave. The good people at SendWave know that the new school year is starting back home. And this is the time to support family and help with school fees. So SendWave wants to help you send with love. Now, remember to use the promo code before you make your first transfer. Otherwise, it won't work. On top of that, everyone who sends to Nigeria, old and new senders, will get 4.5% cash bonus for transfers above $50 or 50 euro or 50 pounds. So what are you waiting for? Come on, come on, hurry up. Here's my concern for today. It's taken from page 419 of the book, The Outsiders by S. E. Hinton. And it says, I lie to myself all the time, but I never believe me. 
hey, hey, I go far to get you these things. If you must, you can lie to yourself, but don't ever, ever believe it. That is when you destroy yourself. Until next week, I'm Dr. Damages. I diagnose. You hear yourself. Woo! Thank you, thank you so much for working out and for watching. Thank you. It's been so, it's so hot here, and I'm happy we finished. Please, can you click, click like? And also share, share our video, please help us. I, I've never said this before, please help us share. People say they don't know that we are back. We've been back for so long, help us. Thank you. Thank you, my man. Ah, thank you, madam. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you.